the Popol Vuh was the story of the Maya people they told to the Spaniards in the 16th century. The Popol Vuh and Chilam Balam claim to tell the creation myth of the Mayan people. Some of it may be their true beliefs and some of the characters may be based on the real gods of their beliefs. But, much of it may also have been for the benefit of the Spanish. When the Spanish conquered what was left of the Maya Empire or Aztec Empire in the 16th century, they forced their new subjects to convert to Christianity and speak and write in Spanish. But long before the Maya used the Roman alphabet, they had their own rich and elegant script, featuring more than 800 hieroglyphs. These appeared throughout their towns on stelas, buildings, staircases, and everywhere people might pass. The glyphs' meanings were lost in the decades following the conquest and no Spanish conquistador or priest ever learned to speak the language or read the glyphs so how did they translate the Popol Vuh and Chilam Balam? Rima Chudda, a noted scholar on the topic said, Ever since then, scholars have struggled to decode these symbols, pronounce the words they form, and understand the stories they tell. Only recently can they read more than 90% of the glyphs. The true story can be found on the stelas, buildings, stairways, and artifacts left by the Maya and in the stories of the Toltec and Olmec peoples that preceded them. While conquistador Hernando Cortes was busy massacring people, the church was busy destroying any books or evidence of Maya culture. The famous Dresden Codex was one of just four Maya illustrated books that survived the Spanish and Diego de Landa, a friar bent on replacing indigenous beliefs with Christian beliefs. It's not like the Maya didn't write down their history or beliefs, because in 1562 Diego de Landa burned thousands of Maya bark paper books, which he deemed heretical. It was centuries later before an eccentric European genius named Constantine Rafinesque reproduced just five pages of the Dresden Codex, from which he was able to crack the Maya system of counting. The Maya even had a symbol for zero, which appeared on Mesoamerican carvings as early as 36 BC and didn't appear in Western Europe until the 12th century. A lucky librarian with a penchant for mathematics happened to decode the astronomy tables the Maya used to determine when to do things such as wage war. The Maya system for measuring time, now called the calendar round cycles dates once every 52 years, like a Gregorian calendar. For the Maya, the world was created on August 13, 31, 14 BC our calendar. Finally, in the 1980s, a 15-year-old named David Stewart working on the site at Palenque for the summer discovered that individual Maya words could be written in multiple ways, using different symbols for the same sounds, as in phase and a phase. He won the MacArthur Genius Award for his efforts and here we are now where we can read the facts that the Maya put down themselves and not the Spanish propaganda. Early Maya scribes were held in exalted status, living like royalty, and vying to develop their own glyphic style. The Maya story could be read by the average Joe walking through the plaza. They believed that thirteen heavens were arranged in layers above the earth, which itself rested on the back of a huge crocodile or reptilian monster floating on the ocean. In the world's center was a tree of life known as the XJ Seba that serves as a means of communication between all the various spheres. Under the earth were nine underworlds, also arranged in layers. Thirteen gods, the Oxlahontiku, presided over the heavens while nine gods, the Balantiku, ruled the subterranean worlds. The nine deities are sculptured on the walls of a 7th century crypt at Palenque. We know they are the truth. The earth and sky were visualized as horizontally extended serpents and dragons with two heads and occasionally feathered. They serve as vehicles for deities and ancestors to move about on. Other serpents, shown as vertically rising, connect the various spheres 
to transport the subterranean or terrestrial waters to the sky. Dragons combine features of serpents, crocodiles, and deer, with many showing star signs to identify them with the Milky Way. As it was written, On creation of the world raised up sky lord caused three stones to be set by associated gods at lying down sky, first three stone place. This was accomplished by the figures of two so-called paddler gods, the jaguar paddler and the spine paddler and the Maya maze god. Because the sky still lay on the primordial sea, it was black. The setting of the three stones centred the cosmos which allowed the sky to be raised, revealing the sun and the underworld among whom the deity Bolognac ruled. Mayas believe in the existence, within every one of shadow, breath, blood, and bone. The entrance to Zibalba was traditionally held to be a cave in the vicinity of Coban, Guatemala. Good place for your next vacation, a place of fright. The sky and earth connected, which left no space for any beings or vegetation to grow. So, to make space, a Saba tree was planted. The tree grew roots in all the levels of the underworld and its branches grew into the upper world. The tree trunk grew to leave space on earth for animals, plants, and humans. According to Maya belief, animals and plants were created before humans. The gods were not satisfied with only the animals because they could not speak to honor them. There have been three creations of humans. Two of these have ended or, in other words, the creatures have been destroyed. The first creation saw people made of mud. The mud people were not the most productive as many were not able to think. They spoke but had no mind. They could not move because they were made of mud. They were destroyed by a great flood. For the second creation, the deities made men from wood and women from reeds. These had no souls and didn't honor the gods. They were also immortal. When they died, they only remained dead for three days and would rise from the dead. The destruction of the tree men and reed women was caused by an inundation of boiling hot water. The few who may have survived this apocalypse are thought to have become the monkeys that exist today. This third creation wave saw the birth of modern-day humans made of white and yellow maize dough and the blood of the gods. For men and for women but they were deemed too wise by the gods. The Maya deities believed these intelligent humans were a threat to their authority and almost destroyed them as well. However, heart of heaven clouded their minds and eyes so that they would become less wise. The Maya believe that contemporary humans will be destroyed and another creation will be required but a belief in the end of humanity doesn't necessarily mean the end of the world. It's the end of an era and, perhaps, the beginning of a new epoch of the gods. As in the Shatur Yugas of Hindu mythology, the four hieroglyphic manuscripts that escaped the Spanish, especially the Dresden Codex, depict several deities that we can take as true. Itzimna, Lord of the Heavens, ruled over a pantheon of gods and goddesses and was closely associated with Kinichejo, the sun god, and with the moon goddess Ixchil. Though Itzimna was considered an entirely benevolent god, Ixchil, his wife, was an evil old woman. Nice guy, but his wife is to be avoided. The Czechs, the rain gods of the peasants, were believed to pour rain by emptying their gourds and to hurl stone axes upon the earth as lightning. Their companions were frogs whose croaking announced the rains. Earth gods were worshipped in the highlands, and wind gods were of minor importance elsewhere. The corn god, a youthful deity with an ear of corn in his headdress, also ruled over vegetation in general. His name was Amun, and he was sometimes shown in combat with the death god, Apuk, a skeleton-like being, patron of the sixth-day sign Chimi. 
The sixth day sign of the Maya zodiac is death also known as Chimi, world bridger, or transformer. Chimi is considered a lucky day to be born because death was a day of transformation, not dying. The sign of death symbolized the ancestors and getting guidance from the ancestors was central to Maya cultural practices. Death is connected to the crown chakra and so the sign of death brings the world transformation, rebirth, and knowledge. Several other deities were associated with death such as Ike Chua, a war god and god of merchants and cacao growers, and Ike Stab, patron goddess of the suicides by hanging. Itzimna appeared as four gods called Itzimnas, who encased the world. The Itzimnas were associated with the points of the compass and their colors east, red, north, white, west, black, and south, yellow. On two of the Dresden Codex's very first pages, the head of Itzimna appears within the serpent maw of a two-headed caiman representing the earth. Classic Maya beliefs had a set of twins just as they did in the Pabovu and as there are in so many creation stories from Tasmania to the American Midwest and even India. Twins abound. Kayanichaha was a middle-aged man with an aquiline nose, large square eyes, cross-eyed, and a filed incisor in the upper row of his teeth. He is the sun-faced lord, typically portrayed as rising or being born in the east and aging as the sun sets. This fierce sun deity would then turn into a jaguar and become a war advisor in the underworld. The sun deities are both worshipped and feared because, while they offer the life-giving properties of the sun, they can sometimes provide too much sun and cause a drought. Chisi, the seeming counterpart of Cain Ichahau, was the rain god and is both human and reptile and usually shown with a lightning bolt, a serpent, or an axe sometimes shown blue and with snake-like whiskers protruding from his face. The Maya believed that Chisi lived in caves where lightning, thunder, and clouds were made. Chisi, too, was both feared and worshipped. He brought the needed rains for the people, but also produced floods, threatening lightning, and behaved much like a wild storm. He demanded blood sacrifices in payment for the rains that he provided. A large part of one of the four surviving Maya codices, the Dresden Codex, is dedicated to the Czechs, their locations, and activities. It illustrates the intimate relationship existing between the Czechs, the Bacabs, and the aged goddess, Ixchel. Keowil, is the keeper of the scepter, protector of the royal line and linked to lightning. He's usually pictured with a piercing of a smoking torch or a grisly axe blade. In addition to his frightful piercings, he also has a snake as one foot and an upturned snout for the other. Kea Wheel is credited with discovering Coco and Maze after striking a mountain with one of his lightning bolts. Kea Wheel had a snout that turned up, big eyes with spirals for pupils, a fang coming out of his mouth, and one or both of his legs is a snake, with a snake's head where a foot should be. His forehead had a smoking item stuck to it like a smoking axe head or a cigar or a torch. Then there was Kisim, known to his friends and relatives as the Flatulent One. This deity is a terrifying god of death and decay. Kisim has been portrayed as a decomposing skeleton or zombie, accompanied by an owl, a messenger of the underworld. Two amazing twins existed in the classic period known as Hunajapu and Spalank, not to be confused with the twins in the Papalvu. The shooting of the principal bird deity is one of the main episodes of the classic twins, but is copied by the Papalvu twins. Picture yourself in the 5th century. A very warm summer night when you and your brother have reached the age of ascension. You already know the story of creation, where raised up Sky Lord caused three stones to be set by gods at the place known as Lying Down Sky, first three stone place. Tonight, 
Your parents had brought you to Coban, Guatemala, a trip which took several months to make but a once-in-a-lifetime event revealing to you the underworld called Zibalba where Bolognac ruled. The Paddler Gods and the Maya Maze God would be emblazoned on your mind. Perhaps there would be some Paddler God loppers in attendance. Your parents have just passed you over to the Maya officials dressed as jaguars and snakes who give you warm cocoa laced with peyote or mescaline to drink as you join the other young adults. As dusk sets and you travel down into the bowels of the cenote lit with flames burning intoxicating fuel and casting reflective shadows that dance throughout the eerie underground world of a phasing reality. Gems reflect light of different color in the ceiling that mimic constellations or display elaborate images of their gods and demons. By now you have ingested everything from magic mushrooms to mercury fumes from the liquid mercury used to portray bodies of water in their underground worlds. Finally, you stumble out of that cave and fall face first onto the jungle floor. By the time you roll over and look up at a sky with thousands of more stars than you have ever seen, you will be a believer too as you drift off.